Hello and welcome. Uh, great to see you again. It's been some time since I last saw you, but fantastic to have you here. And I wonder if you could just introduce yourself to everyone who's watching. And the first question I've got for you is contract management hasn't always been the number one thing that people have recognized as a function or a core competence. Why should we all be listening to you and thinking about contract management as a critical area of the business? Okay. Hello, Steve, and thank you for this. My name is Ochuko Otiotio. I work in Lagos, Nigeria as a contract management expert. I have worked in several industries and sectors in Nigeria, but currently I'm in the oil and gas industry. The difference I had noticed moving from one sector to the other was in some sectors, contracting is not as important because it's not the core of the business. However, in the oil and gas sector, where you have a lot of um, strategic purchasing, it has become a strategic partner and um, the organizations have started seeing it as that as well. Yeah, we're, we're, we're constantly uh, in, in that box, aren't we? Focusing on cost, um, yes. thinking about cost uh, all the time and how to minimize it. Yes, so for the manufacturing industry, the cost of the raw material pays a direct influence on the cost of the goods. So if they are able to minimize the cost of the raw materials, it helps in them having a wider um, profit margins. Yeah. So um, also with contracting management, you are able to manage your suppliers better and um, use some of the strategic, um, some of the strategies of contracting like um, just in time yeah. and then the lean system to bring in some of these vendors and suppliers that impact in the bottom line of any organization. Yeah. So, so definitely uh, we can say that once, you know, I've seen it in the past where we've struck a deal and we think that's it, that's it, you know, that's the end of it. And here we're saying that, no, it's just the start of it, striking the deal, yeah. the negotiation, and then we put the contract together. That's just the start of realizing whether or not we can get, as you say, the benefits, the cost savings, the improvement in profit that we believed we could. What, what else? What are the, some of the other things that you've seen uh, contract management do that uh, provide benefits? So, yeah, we, we, as you say, big tick in the box for cost savings and profit. But what else can con good contract management do? Okay, so one other aspect is um, the supplier management helps to uh, mitigate risk and increases um, profitability and add efficiency. Efficiency, So yeah. um, Yes, so um, we ensure that there is standardization yep. whilst um, saving money. We ensure there's standardization in our procurement processes. And then ensure that there are no waste in the supply chain, man uh, supply chain. So we actually would have to look. Um, we have to look at um, the backward integration yep. and ensure there are no wastages. And then yep. at that point, we talk about um, sustainability, where we look at the people and um, how they um, um, they impact in our bottom line, because that would help us in um, ensuring that our reputation yep. and the cost of these items are at par with the values and missions of the organization. Yeah, it, it's really interesting that, you know, some years ago, <clears throat> we, and we probably still hear it now, focus on price. And now we talk about focus on the total cost of ownership, as you've said, the end-to-end -end piece, looking right across the supply chain. You've mentioned lean and just in time, running those, uh, applications to make sure that we only have inventory when we need it. We're not holding big warehouses full of, you know, costly items. And yeah. of course, in that, you know, you've now brought in risk 
into your uh, presentation. You've now brought risk in, as in the reputation to the company and assessing certain types of risk, meaning in particular in oil and gas, of course, you know, drilling in areas that are very sensitive, um, you know, and sustainability. So that's a huge area for the sector you're working in at the moment. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And then um, another thing that um, we have done to ensure that um, procurement is seen as a strategic partner is ensuring that the specification yeah. at, the, in, at the beginning of the procurement cycle, it is at par with exactly the need that we require. Yeah. So for the strategic part of the business, where we talk about like the drilling, we usually would go with the um, early supplier involvement. That way we are yeah. sure that whatever the outcome is befits the business. And then there are a lot of cost savings as well. Yeah, it's like there's a golden thread all the way through, you know. Yeah. It, it, I think, you know, many years ago, procurement people like to hide behind their desk, not, not getting involved in the business, not wanting to perhaps have any conflict with the business. But now there's no hiding anymore because mm -hmm. procurement, as you say, need to be on the join up that golden thread with the objectives of the business. Uh, particularly all the stakeholders that are involved uh, and they may not actually be only in the business stakeholders can be environmental groups in oil and gas um, pressure groups and so on so it's joining all those people all those um, uh, interested parties along that golden thread as you say and then looking if you like behind us at the supply yes. base and getting early involvement from them, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, yes, that's yeah, that is true as well. Then um, another aspect is the innovation, the yeah. contract management, and the buyers are able to innovate ideas that would help the core of the business as well. And in doing that, they ensure that whatever it is that the stakeholders require are best value for the company because yeah. there are times when the um, stakeholders are only interested in the performance of what they want but where the contract management come in is being able to ascertain that whatever they require is best fit for the business at that point in time and for the future because don't forget that when we have um, suppliers that we manage they're able to give us information yeah. about new innovations that would they may come up in the future and um, other equipments that may be required for us to either change out now or buy spare parts for future purposes. For example, is during um, the COVID um, pandemic at the beginning, for countries like us that it didn't, um, the impact wasn't felt in the first quarter yeah. of the pandemic, yeah. we're able to contact our vendors, which is more like being proactive to say, what are the implications of this pandemic hitting a country like Nigeria? Yeah. And then what do we need to put in place to ensure that we are well prepared for them? Because at that point, you still have been lack of supply, delay in, um, in um, deliveries, especially when you have to import stuff, even yeah. the closure of the borders. So with that, yeah. we are able to buy equipment and materials we need it for sustainability in the office and our environment before the lockdown took place here in Nigeria. Yeah, absolutely. And I was just thinking as you were talking about something that is in my head all the time now, whenever you talk to people in businesses, they say it's different here, Steve. You know, you and I are global colleagues. Uh, it's not so different from the UK with Brexit. We're coming out of Brexit and all the fears of, you know, um, the, as you say, the borders um, between us and, and the rest of the world. And will we have enough stock? Will we have enough inventory 
to if the borders close or other countries uh, turn off the, the supply tap. So <clears throat> there's lots of similarities in yes. uh, our countries, in our continents and around the world that people should be aware. It's not so different just because yes. UK, <coughs> Nigeria, Europe, Africa, you know, there's lots of similarities that go on, um, you know, it, it, between us. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. And um, that is why we, um, we insist and um, we focus on standardization yeah, to, ensure that, to ensure that uh, whatever it is that we are doing here, we're doing to the standard of the profession. Yeah. So that is important as well. So that's why we ensure that right from the start of um, the procurement cycle, we ensure that the contracting and the procurement team are involved. Yeah, get, get them involved really early. So what I'm hearing is in conclusion, and obviously we'll, we'll wrap things up now, is that there are some differences there are some things which are shall we say based locally that we need to be aware of with contract management and maybe as we move from sector to sector uh, oil oil and gas might be a bit different to financial services there is a bit about getting aware and getting familiar with the sector or the country that we're in but actually i'm thinking 80% of what you've got in contract management is quite transferable into another business, another country, because there are lots of similarities in what you face in terms of successful implementation. Would that be right? Yes, yes, you're correct, Steve. Um, every business has a target goal. And more often than not, profitability is the end goal for them. Yeah. So which means if they're able to, even if when the core of their business is in finance or in manufacturing, the core is that the input that comes into the business has to be low. The cost has to be low. That way, the business is not as expensive and their overheads are not as expensive. And that's what impacts in their profitability. This is where contracts come in in every sector. Contracts and procurement are the department in charge of buying. Yeah. Anything yeah, we, for we the organization. Yeah, we should never forget that. Whatever we're taught, yes. uh, we're, whatever we're called, it's buying. <laughs> spending yes, money. Yes, it's buying. Yes, spending money. So because we are involved in spending money, we have to ensure that whatever we spend, it's value for money for the organization. Value so for money, that, yeah. Yes, so that at every point in time, they see the strategic need for the contracting department. Excellent. And that, I think that's yeah. a great place that you go to, to end the conversation. It's Thank absolutely you, always a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, I think too. Uh, it, it, it's been a fascinating conversation and look forward to our next conversation and to seeing you soon. Yes, 